Kabupaten. Let us as we proceed to our first one this morning, let's all stand as we open again in first Samuel, second Samuel chapter four. Joab sought or 
seek for revenge kasi pinapay ni Abner napatay ni Abner yung kanyang kapatid so he is Joel to, to seek revenge against Abner and after the death of Abner aside of the crisis that was experienced by David because uh, Joel did a move na walang approval ni David and so Joab are accountable together with his men and if they are to be if David should to be strict no, pwedeng mamatay si Joab pwedeng pangayin however Joab is a uh, uh, ito, isa siyang uh, performer no, pagdating sa sa kanilang bansa Okay. So, siya ay matibay na sundalo. So, there, merong crisis leadership patating kay David. Now, aside to that, aside, aside sa effect na yan, the other effect of the death of Abner ay doon kay King Ismushet. Merong direct effect kay King Ismushet kasi Abner is like siya yung parang foundation ng pagiging hari ni King Ismushet. When Abner dead, dito natin nakikita na mas lalong humina si King Ismushet. As you have noticed in verse 1 ng chapter 4, and when Sosan heard that Abner was dead in the dawn, his hands were feeble. Sabi yung hands, yung kanyang kamay daw ay Ibig sabihin yung kanyang kamay, yung kanyang authority, yung kanyang influence ay feeble. Pag sa ating feeble, uh, ibig sabihin na feeble ay ano, uh, markedly lacking in strength. Uh, parang no, nang ina, nawala. Kung baga sa, sa kamay ng awit, napagod, pumapa yung strength, yung quality or indicating weakness, deficient qualities or resources that indicate right by more authority or force or uh, effectively na yung pagiging effective. So, ganun ang ibig sabihin ng people. Naging hindi na siya effective sa Israel. Okay? Na hindi na siya, kung baga, ang mahina to. When was the time that Philippines, that the people of the Philippines lose their confidence towards the their leaders? Diba? Sa dila, mahina yung presidente natin. So many critics. Hindi katulad pag pamatid ah, yung presidente natin. Something like that. So, of course, not all people will be convinced that they have a strong king, a strong president in the hand. Meron talagang hindi rin satisfied. But when we talk about the majority, no, in, yung panagkaya na to ng Israel, in the reign of King Ismushet, ay mahina na. Okay? Are you with me? Okay. Hindihan niyo ba yung sinasabi ng Ismushet ko para ma, uh, makasunod tayo, no? Because take note, we are running more chapters, more books and more chapters. Very important that we were able to catch this kasi ito ay may uh, kaugnayan sa mga susunod natin mapag-ikinggan at mapag-aaral. No? So, sa verse 2, and so sign that two men no, that were captains of hands The name of the one was Bana, and the name of the other, Reka. No? Sila ay mga descendants or mga lahi ng Benjamites. Mga Benjamites sila. As you know, uh, si King Ismushet ay isa rin Benjamites. Di ba? So, doon natin may kita na na kasi si King Saul ay Benjamite, so yung kanyang anak ang nagpapalit sa kanya. So, 
Kumbaga, ang may pinakamalaking uh, allegiance dito ay ang mga Benjamites. Kaya yung captain ni King Isbushet na dalawa ay Benjamites din. Now, take note. Abner is a captain and this two person also is a captain of his horse. No? Pag sabi yung captain, mga leader ito, mga kanang kamay, kaliwang kamay. So, very close to the king. Okay? No mga may si Abner, aba, mamapansin mo dito, biglang nag-iba ang higit ng hangin. Bakit kaya? Nakapag-isip ng hindi kaaya-aya itong dalawa. At pinaglaluhan nila paano nila papapayin si King Yusbushet. Can you imagine they plan to murder their king? Okay? At you know what's their motive? If you read, the 12 verses lang naman yan. So, hindi na natin patagalin. Alam nyo kung ano ang motivo nila. Ba't nila gusto patayin si King Yusbushet? So that they can find favor to David. Diba? Gusto nila makuha yung favor kay David. So ginawa nila, pumunta sila sa bahay ni King Isbushet in the middle of the day, araw na araw, kasi they have access. They were the captains ba naman? So makakapasok sila sa mga guards. So tuloy-tuloy sila. Pagdating sa loob, pinatay nila <coughs> si King Isbushet. Natutulog eh. Ayaw ko ba bakit yung hari nila patulog-tulog na lang? Diba? Mahirap talaga pag patulog-tulog. Uunday ang nakala. Pansinin mo ha, he was shot at the peak rig. Kung bilang na kayo, ilang rig meron tayo? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5. Kinakapakot mong binabasa ko ito. Ano ba yung unang rig? Sinurse ko sa Google yung image na first rig, second rig, third rig. Yung peak rig pala, doon nakatapat yung heart natin. So, ang ginawa nila sa picture, tinusok nila yun. No? Na tinusok nila na, ano ba yung pinatinusok nila? Uh, in the sons of Raymond and Berotai, Rakab and Bana, when we came about the heat of the day in the house of Bishbisha, who lay in bed at noon. And they came fighter into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched with Doon nagpanggap sila na magluwa lang sila ng liquid. And they smoked him under the fifth rig sa ilalim ng ikalimang tag ito. Tadyan na itong rig. Ano sa Tagalog ang rig? Alam niyo sa Tagalog yung rig? Tadyan ba? Ilang? Basta isang tadyan. Basta may tadyan. Pag-ihira. Pag-ihira yung tadyan yung tadyan. So yung rig, di ko alam ko ang pagano. Basta sa ilalim ng ikalimang rig, doon ang tinuso. Eh, no? Of course, tuso pa naman yung tusukin mo, di ka tayo. No? And this is not the only first experience where in ang death point ng mga tao ay yung pipin. Si ano din, si Abner, pinatay niya rin. Nung namatay din yung kapatid ni Abner, ay yung kapatid ni Joab sa Pink Creek din yun. Uh, basta pag tinira kayo, tinira doon, uh, one shot lang yun. Ganun po, mga kapatid. So, what happened? After that, uh, in verse 4, notice ko lang, no? I am first running the background of this chapter. Later, after this, I will share with you the point or sermon uh, subject natin for today. But I am running the, the background, running through the background so that we will be able to ang tawag nito, para ma-acting, ma- makasingkin tayo, makuha natin. Oh, ito pala yung chapter 4. Ito pala yung connection. As I learned doing this manner of sermon. May mga pinapanggit dyan na minsan ako tatik ko para mapakuna na uh, glimpse of information that soon will be clarified in the next coming chapters. So, may napansin lang ako dito sa verse 4. And Jonathan, nabilang nasingit si Jonathan, so sang 
Ikaw, Han Asan, that was slain on his feet. Meron daw siyang tumpong anak, si Jonathan. He was five years old when the thing, when the fighting came of Saul, and Jonathan out of Israel, and his nurse took him up and fled, and came to pass as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame, and his name was Mipu Bushet. So, Mipu Bushet. Okay, so, I don't know kung ano ang connection nito with the future, but in this chapter, parang irrelevant. Irrelevant siya kung bakit si Jonathan Pangit meron siyang tumpong anak. Okay? At makikita mo dito, five years old daw siya nahulog. Kaya yung mga anak natin, yung five years old din ata natin, mahulog ng pukos pala ng pagkalungan ko yun. Depende eh, kung anong point siya, anong point ng tamahan. So, mga kapatid, this is the background. And if we continue reading up to verse 8, no, hanggang verse 8, hanggang 12, ang ginawa nitong si Paana in Rekha, dinala nila yung ulo ni Miss Boucher kay King David. So, and they brought the head, verse 8, of his Boucher unto David to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold, the head of his Boucher, no, the son of Saul, thy enemy, with which sought thy life. And the Lord hath avenged my Lord the King of this day of Saul, and of his seed. Uh, Pansinin nyo yung kanilang, uh, I believe that they plan for this. I believe that they meditate what to do. Bago sila nagplano, uh, bago, sila, bago nila ito ginawa, they plan. At pag pinapay natin si King is Moshet, anong gagawin natin? Dagihin natin yung kanyang ulo kay King David at sabihin natin sa kanya na uh, this is a good news for you. Yung kalaban mo, pinatay na namin. Pinadali namin ang buhay. Wala na mag-first. Wala ka ng kalaban din. Something like that. They thought that they can gain something out of it. I believe so. So, in verse 9, dito, mapapansin natin how David react on this. Verse 9, And David answered Rechab, Rechab, and Bana his brother, the sons of Remoth, the Bitterite, and said unto them, As the Lord liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity? When one told me, saying, So, dito, na-recall ni David, yung isang pangyayari doon sa sa Zikla. No? When he was in Zikla, do you remember? Do you still recall Zikla? Okay? Naalala niyo pa yung Zikla? Ang Zikla, that is the temporary place of David no, no siya ay nag-fled from Israel. Di ba? Lumaya siya sa Israel at pumunta siya sa place ng mga Philistines. Sino yung kanyang kaibigan na hari doon? Si King Akish. Diba? Si King Akish, friend na yun, at binigyan siya ng place na si Clark. The, that time, ay possessed pa ng ibang ng mga Amalekans. Diba? Possessed pa ng ibang mga lahat. Sinakot na yun, and that si Clark became his temporary place. And then, doon sila, nag-join sila dapat sa Philistines to fight against Israel. However, the Lord redeemed them from having so pinabalik sila sa Sikla. When King Saul is dead, pinuntahan siya doon ng isang Amalekites sa Sikla at sinabi niya, patay na si King Saul. At pinatay ko siya kasi inirequest niya na patayin ko siya. So, dito binanggit niya ni David yung ganong occurrence. Sabi niya sa verse 10, When one told me, saying, Behold, so is dead, thinking, awan niyo, thinking to have brought 
good five days. I took hold of him and stood him in Sikla. No? Alam mo, si David, manonotis mo, ito ba siya mag-isip? Okay? Nababasa niya yung motivo no Amalekites. And so, the same motive na nakikita niya dito sa dalawa, no, kay Bana and kay Rekha, that they have a motivation, a motive, a wrong motive, similar to this Amalekites na pinatay niya doon sa Siklag. I took hold and slew him in Siklag to talk, no, naiisip niya, that I would give him a reward for his fightings. Nakala niya, bibigyan ko siya ng pabuya sa kanyang magandang balita. Mga pagsabi ng tithing is ano yung balita. Yan yun. Okay? So, what happened? Verse 11. How much more the wicked men talking to these two men. No? Wicked men have slain the righteous person in his own house upon his bed. Alam nyo, si David believed that his bullshit is a righteous, is a righteous person. Ano bakit kaya there's something na kay David, kakaiba si David mag-isip, kakaiba siya mag- tumingin ng magbasa ng tao. No? Because, supposed to be, he is treating his bullshit as an enemy. But, he treated and he thought his bullshit as a righteous person. At sabi nito, righteous person in his own house, upon his bed. Shall I not therefore now require his blood of your men? and take you away from the earth. And David commanded his young men, and they slew them, and cut off their hands and their feet. No? Ibang klase yung pinagawa dito ni David. Pinaputol niya yung kamay at saka yung paa. Parang pagka i-imagine mo, what a tragic, tragic, uh, occurrence scenario sa Old Testament. No? Nung panahon nila, ganun ka-tragic. O, basta nalang pumutol ng ulo, bibit-bitin na, ay, kay, can you, uh, can you bear, no? bibit-bitin mo yung ulo ng isang tao. Isipin mo yung ulo. Di ba? But if you're a warrior, maybe, wala na yun. Okay. So David commanded his young men to cut smooth it and cut out their hands and their feet and hung them up over the pool of Hebron. But they took the head of his bushet and buried it in the city where of David. Mga kapatid sa Old Testament, yung libingan mo ang hindi pinapaw sa Lord of God. It's, ah, ah, ang tawag ito yung Sipiker, pag sabi ng Sipiker, Sipiker, eh para siyang kweba na bato na sinasarap. Anyone, pwede maraming ilagay doon. Okay, pag sa masama ay nasatakas. Si Jesus Christ, when He died, yung His body also laid in the Sipiker. Hindi ko siya pinagpinagunan ng lupa. So, lahat ng pinagawa natin yun. So, yun po yung sinabi. For your understanding. Now, brethren, what's the message behind? So, I'd like to share with you today about the character of David. The way he qualified other motives. So, tonight, I today, This morning, we will talk about qualifying motives. <clears throat> Alam nyo, lahat tayo na may kanya-kanya motives. Uh, pag sabi yung motives, desires, intention, no? 
or something that causes a person to act. Isang class, isang dahilan kung bakit yung tao ay gagawa ng ganito. So, it's about uh, something that causes a person to act. No, yung kanyang dahilan, ba't may gagawin ito? We talk that we, we can point it as motive. Ano ba motive mo? Diba? Let's say, when we attend the church, what is your motive? No? We can also check and think of it, what's our motive? Ano ba dahilan mo kapag ikaw ay dadalo ng church? Yan. Kapag ikaw ay mag-aasawa, Kapag ikaw ay makikipag-boyfriend girl, motive niyo. Kapag ikaw ay mag-aabroad o mag anak ng trabaho, may motive niyo. No? What is your motive? May mga causes pag sabi ng motive. Reasons. No? Motive. Kaya lang, hindi siya as in uh, reasons at all, no? kundi yung motive is a specific intention or specific reason. Uh, nasa bilong sa pwede siyang reason kaya na meron pa siyang mas uh, nagsiseparate siya na, na this, uh, description so that is something that causes a person to act now ability to qualify motives are very important in our living theory No, yung habilidad daw na uh, mag-qualify. Pag sabi qualify, ibig sabihin, sinasala mo. Ibig sabihin, uh, you are putting someone's motive into uh, question or test no, or verification. Tama ba to? O kaya, Maganda ba yung motibo niya? Is it harmful? It is for good? For better? Or for worse? Diba? So yun yung qualifying motives. Nang kung may lumapit sa'yo na ikaw ay pinalok mo na kung ano man. No? Siyempre, dapat pag pinakinggan mo siya, sinecheck mo, no? tinitingnan mo rin yung kanya ko sa ko. Pero uh, iba na they were they can deceive us or they can promote something na hindi ka na makakapag-isip kung ano ang kanilang motibo. They will just divert you into a good good uh, ano tawag nito? Good facts or good appearance. No? Kaya yung iba, alam nyo yung iba mga marketing sa world, in a world set up. They hire mga sexy people. Ay, yung mga sexy, mga parang pag nagsunod, nag, ano sila talaga, nakakasilaw ng mga, ng mga figure. Kasi pang distract ng motive yun. No, hindi ka na makakapag qualify kasi na, na, na divert na dun sa mga sa ganung bagay na distract ka na and you have no time to qualify the motive. No? So there are so many the worlds are good in it and distracting us no? in uh, deceiving us not to qualify motives. Okay? So we can learn here that danger is good in qualifying motives. No? Even from the very beginning of his life or yung kanyang exposure in the uh, in the will of God, no? dun sa makikita mo talaga na uh, magaling si David. No? God gave him a gift to determine motives that will help him decide wisely, act wisely. No? So, ability to qualify, qualify motives are very important 
in our exposure here on earth and poor or inability to do quality or qualify other mobile stores, you may lead you to a situation or decision making that soon you will regret or being away from God. Alam nyo, kapag meron kang poor, sabi po, hindi wise, hindi excellent. No, poor or inability. Pag sabi yung inability, yung wala akong kakayanan, hindi ka makakapag, hindi ka, hindi mo makwalify. If you have poor or, in, or inability to qualify motives, pwede kang masadlak sa mga desisyon na magsisisi ka. Masasadlak ka sa mga desisyon na may ipit ka. No? You will regret it or it will lead you away to God. Now, that's why ability to qualify motives is very important for a Christian. And how to strengthen that ability? How to gain that ability? Of course, from the words of God. Because if you learn the words of God, if you have the wisdom from the words of God, every motives, even motives can be exposed, will be exposed. No, the good thing about the words of God, if you have it, it will expose even motives. Kasi kaya, hindi naman, but when we say motives, not all motives are evil. There are good motives. So even the Lord Jesus Christ qualified motives. God qualified motives. All of us, when we came here, when you sit on your chairs, diba? when you dress up your clothes, when you start thinking, oh, tomorrow I will attend the church. This is the clothes I have to wear. And ito yan. Diba? Ito yung susutin ko. Ito yung uh, shampoo ko. Ito yung sabon ko. Diba? Pati ba shampoo at sabon, pinag-isipo mo, ano ang gamitin? No? And what? Ito, maliligo ako. O, hindi ako maliligo. O, diba? So, what are your, there are lying motives in it, brethren. And we have to realize that in everything we do, no, our motives are very important to God. God reads our motives and God qualifies our motives. And we should not be mistaken to put a uh, high uh, ang tawag ito, yung masyado nating ma-highlight yung mga mga non-essential o mga hindi mahalagang bagay at doon natin ma-exhaust yung ating sarili may boost natin na gusto yung ating panahon doon sa mga hindi naman essential o hindi naman masyadong matter sa Panginoon no? minsan meron tayo na baka na mabalik tayo ng focus at doon natin ibigumos yung ating sarili hindi naman yun ang pinaka ultimate in the eyes of God sometimes yes, we value and we suggest that when we attend church we have to dress up properly tama? we have to really clothe ourselves presentable because we are meeting God. Sa, sa, sa tao, sa physical na usapan eh, kaharap ka sa presidente, o kaharap ka sa, sa mga kinawukulan, tapos naka, nakakurutong ka. Diba? Hindi siya proper. Tama? When we, when we meet our God, He is superior than even the President of the United, United States. Tama? And we have to present ourselves. Okay? So, kaya, 
dapat nating makita yan. We suggest that we should adorn ourselves no, with a foreign present of God. Pero, take note, brethren, we should not give so much in it. Na, as if it's the whole thing. No? Pag sinabi mo na, Pasto, hindi uh, na pala ako para magdapat sa Panginoon kasi nakapagin ko naman. What's your ever? Hindi ganun. Because that is not the whole thing. What is really uh, matter to God, bakit labas ng labas? So, what really matters to God is your heart. Believe me, still it's our heart. While saying so, we are not saying, we are not discounting that we should present our bodies. Uh, we should present ourselves. Diba? Na okay pa na namin natin. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun na ang mga formal, ang mga nakapustura lang ang pwedeng makalin ng Panginoon at pakinggan ng Panginoon. What really, what matters to God is your heart. No? While saying na mahalaga na i-present natin yung sarili natin na maayos, still, ang pinaka-emphasis mga kapatid is yung ating puso as we honor our God. As we live our life, di ba? Kahit na formal ka pagdating ng simbahan, paglabas mo naman ay eh, hindi masigura yung iyong mga kaisipan na buhay, it is no comparison with someone who went to church that are not that is just simply dressed up. No? And then when he went out in this place, eh, napaka sincere niya sa kanya buhay sa Panginoon. Because what really important to God is to present our bodies. We cannot really compare as a whole thing yung mga appearance natin ngayon. Diba? We cannot compare because in the old, the old time, may iba doon, wala naman damit. Diba? Yung mga sa old time, nakapahag lang sila. Diba? Nakapampalda yung mga lalaki na yun. Parang nakabistika eh. Sige, sultin mo ngayon yan. Eh, ito, ganun. Diba? Hindi ka natin pwedeng maging uh, perfect comparison yung appearance natin na yun. But what is the perfect comparison that we should have everyone is that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to the Lord. We are commanded for the sake of order and uh, tawag ito, the order in this sa church that we should adorn ourselves with godly adornment. Diba? Yan yung may kita natin. And there are lying motives in it, brethren. Bakit ka ba nang ganit? Baka may nag-formal ka kasi gusto ko ba? Mukha ko ang maganda. Mukha ko. Diba? Hindi. That is not acceptable motives before God. Diba? O baka naman gusto ko ganito para mukha ko ang mga cool inaks. Diba? Maglalagay ako ng mga ganito para modern na mood. Brethren, even up outside of this worship, house of worship, we should remain to appear and to uh, project that we are the children of God. Kasi nasa, kahit nga pananamit natin, may kundibo yan. Di ba? Kapag nagsuot ka ng, ng mga nagsasuggest ng last eh, that's your motive. Na, eh, kasalanan mo yan. Ba't ka nag-inisip ng gano'n? Huwag ka magsuot ng gano'n that you suggest motives. Right? May participation tayo siya. But if we present, we nagdamit tayo ng formal at may nag-iisip pa rin, eh, kasalanan yun. Eh. 
Pero kung nagtalik ka na, medyo si Doc King. Pag sa lalaki, masyado ang sex. Pakubad-ubad ka siya. Sita yung mga mga tempaks mo. Hindi naman kung maganda yung pulpa. Pakubad-ubad ka siya. Hindi makakita. Either matuwa sila o pag-isa po. Diba? So, we suggest, offer na lang natin. Diba? We are not suggesting anything. So, red, red, red. Qualifying other motives. They that are good in qualifying other motives. He qualifies the motive of the Amalekites. Tama? Dito na-reveal niya eh. Sa verse, sa verse 8, ano na, verse, verse 10, nung kumang dun sa chapter, sa chapter 1, No mamit na yung siklat first, yung amalikay na yung siklat. Hindi niya sinabi na, oh, kailangan mo yata ng reward eh. Diba? Oh, akala mo matutuwa ako sa balita mo. Hindi niya sinabi ka. Pero pagdating ito sa verse 10, He revealed His, uh, He revealed how He read motives. No? Ano ang dating sa Kanya ng motibo itong amalikayas? And he qualified it, whether it is good or bad, whether it is good or displeasing, whether it is pleasing to God or unpleasing. Tama? And you can see David's reaction in it. Sabi niya, hindi pleasing sa Panginoon niya. Ang lakas ng loob mo na saktan yung anointed ng Diyos. And that is not a good tidings. Why? What's the reason? Why David? What's the reason why David are good in qualifying other motives? Number one, because David consistent of respect to God's anointed. No? No? Let us learn the important lessons no, from this. David's consistency, respect, or continuous respect to God's anointed. Makikita mo, mga kapatid, yung, <coughs> yung consistency ni David sa kanyang paniniwala that touch not my anointed and do my prophets over. No, it can be seen in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 21 to 22. Di ba? Sabi doon, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no more. David, it also comes from David. Ganun ang paniniwala ni David from the very start. Kaya mapapansin nyo, even si Saul, how many times na gusto siyang patayin, di ba? Hindi si Batya, nakakailag lang siya. Gusto siyang kasama sa pag... Gusto, gusto siyang kasama ang makadinir pero nakaredi yung siba. Hindi siya tumadalo. Diba? Alam niya talaga eh. Ilang beses kaya ang sinipat si David. Nakaidag lang siya. Si Jonathan na rin, sinipat din ni King Saul. Nakaidag din. Diba? Pero marami rin siya. Doon, si David na-test yung kanyang patience na huwag lumaban. But as some other test, na-test naman yung kanyang, yung kanyang hold, yung kanyang pagpipigil na huwag saktan. Iba yung huwag lumaban sa huwag saktan. Kasi yung si Dave, si King Saul, ilang day, two times niya na dapat na libre-libre. Nung una, hiniwaan niya lang yung laylaya. Pangalawa, kinuha niya yung sibat at saka yung teachers. Tulog na tulog eh. Di ba? That's how David consistent in his respect towards the God's anointed. The reason why David are good in qualifying other motives because he has a strong faith to the words of God. He has a strong hold to the words of God. Brethren, 
we can be also good in qualifying others' motives. If we have a strong foundation and beliefs and trust of the words of God, no one could divert us or uh, deceive us if we have faith in Christ, if we have trust in His words. You cannot divert a person that is strongly attached to the words of God. Tama? Pag sinabihan ka, Oh, Brother Nags, mayroong magandang trabaho, 50,000 ang araw. Pero walang sinigo, hindi ka makasigo. Ay, gusto ko na yan. 50,000 yan eh. Di ba? Ayun na yung mga ganyan yung offer. If you have to stronghold the word of God, wala na, wala na isip-isip. 50,000, mas ko. Tapos na yung problema mo. Kaya isang araw lang ako muna dyan, linggo na, isang linggo lang ako mawala, tapos na yung problema natin. Di ba? 50,000 ba naman eh. Bahay ka ni Pasto. Kikilan ba kita? No? It's about your call to the words of God. What are their motives? Kung meron ka ng ganyang trabaho na may pasok ng linggo and you kinagat mo yun, it, their lies, your motives. Diba? So, kaya mga kapatid, David are good qualifying motive kasi meron siyang malalim na pag-awak sa iba. Consistent siya. He, he is tested. Kaya lumating sa kanya to, can you imagine the stress? Yung stress na kanyang na-experience dahil pinipersecute siya ni Sophie. Di ba? Nag-iwalay siya sa asawa niya. Tapos, nag-isa lang siya. Tanong totally, mag-isa siya. Sa bundok, mag-isa lang siya. Until nagkaroon siya ng mga sympathizers, pinuntahan siya doon ng 600 men. Pero before that, naging mag-isa siya. Matagal siya ng isa. Hanggang unti-unti na in-establish siya ng pangino. Di ba? Hanggang sa stress niya, sabi niya, ayaw ko naman sa Israel. Tapos na lang, ayaw ko ng stress. Ito, nilabas, lumabas siya ng Israel. Nagirahan siya sa mga pa, sa lugar ng kaaway. Huwag lang siya ma-stress sa Israel. Di ba? So, but then, dahil malalim ang kanyang pag-idiwala na hindi niya dapat i-arm ang anointed ng Panginoon, yung respect niya sa salita ng Diyos, He is good in qualifying. Hindi ko siya na-deceive. No, brethren, strong or respect to the words of God will save us from deception. Save us from other diverting motives ng ating mga kaaway at even hands. No, another thing, not only that David is consistently or consistent, consistent of respect to God's anointed, but also David's wisdom. No, David has the wisdom no, to determine between good timings versus deceptive motives. Meron siyang wisdom. Meron siyang katalinuhan. And where that wisdom came from? No, that's came from the words of God. That's came from the way, the, yung, yung direction ng Panginoon sa kanya. No? Because wisdom comes from the fear of God. Diba? Sabi niya, diba? The beginning of wisdom. The fear of God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Hindi mo kailangan magbasa ng sandamukal na libro para maging magkaroon ka ng tatatinuhan. I want to be wise. So give me the books. Even if mga tao ka, ano, kahit na bundok yan, mabasahin ka yun. Hindi bagay ko yung bundok na libro na yan just to get this na. Hindi mo buha yung doon. No, believe me, there are doctorate people they cannot understand the will of God in salvation. Diba? Ang dami yung doctorate dyan. 
hindi nila maintindihan yung doctrine of grace. For them, wala yan. Di ba? May Bible din naman sila. They also read the Bible. And they will just treat the word of God as just ordinary people. And they thought they have, they are more superior to those than that. Itong libro na yan ng Bible, ano, confused na, mau-confuse ka lang dyan, mag-ihirap ka lang dyan. Right? That's how other people think about it. But then, they have a good degree. In the world, they were recognized. Diba? Because what really leads you to the true wisdom? Sabi ng Panginoon, the wisdom of this world is foolishness and the the world. Diba? Eh, nakala mo sobrang talino mo, but you are actually foolish before God. Who are you going? Who are you placing? Sino ba piniplace mo? Ang mundo o ang Panginoon? If you are to please God, you cannot please Him with the wisdom of this world. With the achievement of this world, hindi mo siya makipis dyan. You can please Him by your obedience faithfulness and your respect to His words. And how can you do that? But, nagsisimula yan sa theory ba? David, David's wisdom to determine between good tidings with versus the second and obvious. Alam niya, merong wisdom si David if it is really a good tiding or not. Tama? Sabi niya dito, When one told me, saying, Behold, soul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings. Makakala ng iba, magandang balita. Kaya, hindi lahat ng niisip mo magandang balita, ay maganda. Someone should qualify it. Your here will qualify you of their own. Whether it is good or bad for them. Kaya nga hindi natin po mag-implace lahat ng tao. Tama? But the words of God is not to please you, but to please the Lord. So whether it is good tidings for you or not, we have no choice. No? But to, to, to declare it, we have no choice but to stand for it. Because the point here is not about you, but about our Savior who died at the cross to save His people. Diba? Other people don't, uh, kumbaga, they don't, they, hindi sila kumahang sa ginawa ni Christ. Kalokohan yung way niya na yun. I don't believe that. Diba? And even those who say, oh, maganda yung ginawa ni Christ, only with their mouth, but not of their actions and their beliefs. Diba? They just profess that Jesus is the Savior of the world. But in their actions, it appears they don't believe it. Diba? So, still, kinakwalify naman ng Panginoon mo. It's not, dahil sinabi mo, yun na yun. No? Sometimes, even you don't say anything, you just do the things that is pleasing to God. Sabi niya, di ba, actions speak louder than words. Diba? So, of course, still, kailangan pa rin natin na we have to speak and we have to act. Yan ang sabi ng mga ito. Okay? So, David has the wisdom to determine what, what uh, between good tidings and deceptive motives. You know, Jesus Christ is the best example of it. Si Jesus Christ is more. When Jesus is on fast, no, nung siya ay after na siya ay mabapay si John, nag-fasting si Jesus Christ, di ba? Pag-fasting niya, doon naman siya inoopera ni Satan ng bread. 
gawin mo ang ano to itong pato gawin mong tinapay so alam nyo pagka yung tinapay it is a good tidings for those who are in hunger no? kapag ikaw ay nabumutog at may dumating na pagkain good news na yan diba? pero pag ikaw ay nagpa-fasting ang pagkain is bad news because that is temptation and that is diversion and that is a failure pag ginawa mo na you are on fasting it fail ka na tama? and Satan wants to turn down Jesus Christ in his fasting so ano temptation niya aside pa sa gusto tinitempt siya na magpakita ng miracle sa isang deceptor eh gusto pa ang sirain yung kanyang service devotion ano fasting is service ni pastor di ba Diyos na pastor talino siya ng service take no keys at the flesh no? nasa laman siya the time and he is pleasing his father the one who sent him for this purpose gusto niya sa itan he failed at pangyong no? but Jesus Christ knows what is good tidings in deception no? diba sabi niya Apostle Paul follow me as I follow Christ we should have the same mind like the Lord. We have to determine and we, have, we should be able to learn good tidings versus deception. Diba? The truth will set us free. So, we need the truth in order for us to find, to have wisdom in qualifying motives. Sabi na, hindi mo maluloko yung taong alam ang katotohanan. Right? Kung alam mo muna ang katotohanan, hindi mo pwedeng lukulit yan. Kahit anong sabi. Satan cannot deceive you if you know the truth. Not unless you start believing lies. Right? Kapag naniwala ka na sa lies, eh, truth has no use wala ka sa lies hindi na sa truth it means if you start believing lies then you start binding or pinagkakos mo na yung sabi mo right? kaya ang sabi ng Panginoon the truth should be put them upon your neck no? write them upon the table of your heart sabi ng Panginoon sulat na yun eh kaya sinusulat ng Panginoon sa puso natin. Mga kapatid, <clears throat> temptations come along, especially if we are decided to follow the will of God. Are you decided to follow the will of God? When was the time that you are decided to follow the will of God? Kapag bisibigo ka na, dyan na yung pagsunod. But if you are not decided here, then it's taken easy. No? There's no pressure at all for temptation. It feels like nothing. No grudging at all. Because even you attend the church or not, it's normal thing. There's no difference. But if you decide to follow the Lord, attending, missing attendance in the church is a big deal for you. Agree? Mm-hmm. Kapag ikaw ay nag-decide na talaga magpakatapat sa Panginoon, one Sunday miss out is a big deal for you. But if you are not decided yet, attending the church on and off is not, is not a strange thing. Normal lang Normal lang yun yung mga atin is Why I am always referring to attendance? Because 
That is the, the basic obedience that you can do. You cannot surpass any obedience without being faithful in it. As for kahit hindi ako faithful sa pag-attend sa church, faithful naman ako sa ibang bago. Di ba? You can do it. I challenge you. Show me your faithfulness from other things without being faithful in your dependence. Sige dahil, pakatapat ka na sa Panginoon na hindi hindi katapat sa iyong pagdalo. Di ba? Kasi pag hindi katapat sa pagdalo mo, hindi ka rin tapat sa pagkakaloob mo. Right? You cannot be faithful in it because giving is not sending oh, pastor, chikas na ako. Hindi ka yung mga modern way na kung nag-chikas na ako, hindi ka because giving is you are the one handing it. Because you are the one worshiping to God. Oh. So, brethren, when you are decided to follow the will of God, dyan yung mapasok yung mga temptations. And it's okay. It's okay to have temptations because that's where you can prove no? that you already mature enough to qualify motives around you. Nakuprove mo dyan na yung okay na ako pa sa Panginoon, salamat. I'm able to surpass this. I'm able to win this. I'm able to uh, do your will. I've seen it. I work in it. Diba? Na gagawa mo. Diba? Mga bata, may hinahit na naiintindihan yung sinabi ko. Diba? So, let's have wisdom, brethren. Deciding to follow the will of God is wisdom. No, hindi mo kailangan magbasa ng uh, gabundok na litro para tumalino ka. Sumunod ka sa kalooban ng Panginoon na talino ka. Diba, Nay? Simple pa talino. Simple but, but right. Diba? Kesa na doktor ka, hindi ka magsimba. Pwede ka na magsimba. Diba? O di hindi ka matalino. Saan ka ba ng Panginoon? Matalino ka sa mundo. Kaya lang hindi naman mundo yung pinagaling ko rin. Unless you serve the world. Diba? Pero pag anak na ng Diyos, you serve God. And you should be wise in this world. Serving Him, following His will, is a wise decision and actions in life. No? Then patience comes along, especially when you decide to follow the will of God. No, these temptations to distract you, and there are also plenty of biblical examples of them that fails. No, marami na mga mga example din sa scripture na nagfail sila to determine the will of God. So, wag ka na maghanap ng faith. Gusto ko muna maranasan. Ang dami na yun. Ang dami ng biblical examples. Look what happens to them. No? Sa mga single, sinong example na kapag ka hindi pinigil yung yung pinili mong partner? Sino ang example sa Bible na problema? Samson. Si Samson. He is a mighty man and yet he is a weak man and is strong. Diba? Bahay na pasto. Malakas naman. Diba? Tinan mo, naway siya, nagulap siya. Diba? Tinukit ng mga pilis na yung sumata niya. Diba? At least naman, nagsacrifice siya. Gusto mo rin ba yun? I will sacrifice. Okay ng pasto, naupol na pang ginawa ni Samson. Namatay siya kasama ng mga kalaba. So, sino pa? Solomon. 
Namin yung asawa ko. Diba? Pagkatapos si Solomon, yun ang nangyari. Diba? Divided na ang dami ng problem. Si David, ganito. No? So, there are plenty of examples. And these are these examples were written for you not to do experiment anymore. And you find wisdom in it. Diba? Diba? 